Welcome to Digital Hospitality. I am your host, Sean Walchef. This is a Cali BBQ Media production. Way back in 2017, we had a crazy idea to get on the internet and start to have conversations with people that inspired us, other leaders in the restaurant space, hospitality space, tech space, marketing, branding. And here we are seven years later, Digital Hospitality. Uh, we have a community of people that meet on LinkedIn every Wednesday, every Friday. We would love for you to join us if you're listening, if you're new to this show. Uh, we believe that every business especially brick and mortar businesses need to be digital first. And we also believe that every business is in the hospitality business, whether they know it or not. Uh, super fired up because today we have Ryan Handel, CEO, co-founder of Fix, Get My Fix, F-I-X-E. Ryan is here to tell us all about his life as a restaurateur and how it led him to his life as now someone that is building a tech company focused on finances and making us all more profitable. Ryan, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Excited, excited to be here and tell our story. Well, uh, Ryan, let's let's start with your restaurant background. When uh, when was day one opening up your restaurant? <laughs> uh, I my first restaurant was uh, a concept called Simple Things. It was a sandwich and pie shop. Uh, my grandfather used to take me to this place called the Apple Pan here in Los Angeles, and I was like, "Well, if they could do burgers and pies, why can't you do sandwiches and pies?" And so we were fortunate enough, or unfortunate enough, to open up three days before Thanksgiving in 2010. And so the first Thanksgiving was uh, it was quite kind of an eye opener for being a pie shop, but that was our wow. first location. So yeah, that was my it so wasn't my introduction, but it was my first restaurant. You were baking pies, bacon bacon pies. We had our head baker, and we I was baking. We were we we spent the entire night there <laughs> for a few nights trying to get all these Thanksgiving pie orders out. I forgot how many pies we did, but. Restaurant opened up great, had a great following. Um, we were able to open up another location the year after, and we got a couple more locations along the way. Um, it was great with lunchtime, you know, catering business, especially here in LA with the studios. But unfortunately, like a lot of other restaurants during COVID, um, you know, catering and that type of a business was hard, hard to survive. So we pivoted and you know, uh, and change the concept. And I met some other restaurant friends and we were able to convert my restaurant into some of those other concepts. And and that's how we continue the ball rolling, at least in operating and owning restaurants. What did, what, what are the concepts now? So I was one of my first clients in this accounting business that we're going to talk about in a little bit uh, was this guy, Victor Delgado uh, in tacos, 1986, when he was a cart on the side of the road slinging tacos, you know, uh, on on Wilshire, no, on, on Western between six and Wilshire in Koreatown. And he was crushing it and he had a great following. And I was like, hey, like, I want to help you expand this. So uh, him with his partner, Joy, um, I've been able to help him open up a handful of locations. We converted a couple of my Simple Things locations, the one in Westwood and one in Pasadena. And so I'm, you know, definitely involved in Tacos 1986. Uh, we've got seven locations now and an eighth on the way in Northridge. And then one of my Simple Things locations in Burbank, we had to close down, unfortunately, during COVID. And then the last location, um, we converted to a wine bar, uh, which is the original location on 3rd Street by the Beverly Center. Uh, my original partner, Andy, who I'm still, you know, close with today, uh, he's done other restaurants that are kind of wine oriented. He has a restaurant called Sushi Note. And he's like, why don't we, you know, why don't we convert this to a wine bar? He's like, have at it, you know? And so he did, and it's been doing pretty well since. That's awesome. And what uh, what led you to get my fix? To So, um, you know, I've always been like a numbers guy, right? So I, I went to Cornell, I did the whole hotel school thing, but, and even though I always wanted to open up restaurants, I always wanted to be like the next Chipotle founder at the time, Bob <laughs> Fred, which I thought was super cool. Um, uh, I was always been a numbers guy and I was like, you know, I've always very focused on it. And so eventually when you open up your own restaurant, you, can, you have a couple of choices. You either do your own bookkeeping or you try to outsource it, right? You can't afford to have a whole team there to do it. 
And so I went through a bunch of outsourced bookkeepers and it went through some painful um, moments where I couldn't get my reporting and couldn't get access to information. I was like, there's got to be a better way to do this. And so I called up um, my now partner, Scott, who's a, kind of a, my wife's cousin by marriage. And he um, manages, he was like a business manager on the East Coast. And I was like, Scott, let's, you know, I want you to take this over. Let's figure this out. And he's like, I know nothing about restaurants, <laughs> but I know about financials. It was like, look, I got the restaurant part covered. So we kind of put our heads together and all of a sudden I was, we converted everything to QuickBooks online with some other softwares. And all of a sudden I was managing my books with minimal effort. I had four locate four or five locations. And that's when we said we should start doing this for other restaurants. And that, that was in 2018 was when we kind of came, had that realization that we should start doing this for other people. Tell me about the aha moment, those first customers of like, it's one thing to do it for yourself, to know it works, to recognize the pain point. It's another when someone's actually paying you money to yes. manage like literally the most important thing, the lifeblood of their business. Yeah, it's funny actually, because a lot of, you know, when I started the business and I was like, I had this idea, like, let's, let's make bookkeeping. Let's have like a cooler branding, a hipper branding. I always joke that bookkeeping on its own is kind of like the least sexy industry out there. And like, let's make it cool and hip and have like some cool branding associated with it. And so when we started going out to other restaurants and my wife's like, you got to start networking. And I'm like, that's not my strong suit. Like I'm not a big <laughs> networker. Right. And so when you own your own restaurant, you probably know this when you first open your first restaurant, you're so in the weeds, yep. in your own restaurant that you don't have enough time to like go meet people and go hang out with people and stuff like that. So I was, when she said that, I was like, Oh, I got to start reaching out. And I reached out to all of like my old Cornell friends and anybody I knew in the restaurant business and their first reaction was like, what, like you own restaurants, what do you know about bookkeeping, right? So it was a little <laughs> bit of a tough sell at first, um, but I, I got lucky and Victor will attest to this because I met Victor um, and my friend who owned Wexler's Deli here in Los Angeles, he's like, look, I don't wanna use you yet because you haven't been validated, but I'm gonna introduce you to this guy, Victor. And so we pretended that I had a lot of clients, but really Victor was my first one. And that kind of got the ball rolling. And then as soon as you get a couple, you can get a couple more, then referrals start to happen and start. And then COVID, honestly, it was a little bit of a blessing for us because our price point and our service and the remote, you know, the fact that we do everything remotely kind of played well into how our business scaled and grew. Tell me about some other clients that, um, I mean, Let's talk about QuickBooks just to begin with, like the sure. basis of using QuickBooks for restaurants. If you are a restaurant group, at what point are you starting QuickBooks? I mean, wh when do you, when, when in your journey are you, are you signing up for QuickBooks? So when we started this endeavor back in 2018, 2019, QuickBooks Online um, had a very poor reputation, especially amongst accountants. Everyone was set in their desktop version of QuickBooks or other softwares. And when QuickBooks Online first came out, it just didn't, it didn't compare to the desktop version in the beginning, but eventually it started catching up. And eventually what happened was accountants and bookkeeping firms, they didn't want to use QuickBooks Online because you got to pay a monthly fee associated with it. And they're like, why would I pay a monthly fee when I could pay a you know one-time fee for the desktop and then I'm good? Well, I said, look, I don't care about the monthly fee. They keep on adding on more and more features, right? They keep on adding on more and more bells and whistles. You can integrate other softwares into it to make the entire accounting ecosystem easier. And I was fine to eat that monthly fee because I knew it allowed for a very hands-on, transparent way to do the books where the clients have access, we have access, and it's very easy to review and kind of go over someone's financials. But to answer your original question, in my opinion, like the moment you open your restaurant on day one, 
probably a few months before you open, you should have that stuff set up. You should have QuickBooks set up. Even if you're trying to do it on your own to save some money, have that stuff in QuickBooks online for the 60, 70 bucks a month that you might end up paying. And then eventually when you work with someone like us or another you know, accounting company, they can just kind of take that and take that ball and run with it and integrate all of the software and get it kind of looking spiffy so that you can actually use it to your advantage. Hey everyone, uh, Avi Gorin, CEO and co-founder of Marquee. And I wanna talk about the customer journey for a second. You never know as a restaurant owner where your guests are truly coming from. End of the day, we do see some patterns around two types of search behaviors, direct versus discovery. Direct search, for an example, would be jumping into Google and saying Cali barbecue hours, right? I know where I want to go to eat, but I'm missing a key detail. I need a little bit more information. Discovery, which is the bulk of searches, is barbecue in San Diego, restaurants near me, takeout near me, right? One of the best ways to be found for more discovery searches is leveraging keywords. Reviews are basically free content for you to leverage. Think about keywords that are relevant to your brand, your location, and include as many of those in your review responses as possible, right? How can you go about doing this? Let's set up reports, utilize tools like Google Trends, find out what's going on in your area and how you can help leverage these keywords and review responses, because someone else is doing that, right? If you need some examples, you could do anything from including summer menu, gluten-free menu, um, leverage specific menu items like the dreaded and beloved spice pumpkin anything in your review responses, right? Let them know what's coming. Let your reviewers know something they should come back and try. And of course, if all of this just seems overwhelming and daunting because you're already running a, a restaurant and have enough on your plate, just leverage the team at Marquee to do this for you. We handle all of this. We're experts in this space. We can automate this. So it's just another item that you know you are taking care of. Again, that's marquee.com, M-A-R-Q-I-I, M-A-R-Q-I-I.com. Know you. However, we did recently buy M-A-R-Q-U-I-I.com. So if you do misspell it, we got you. You'll still find us. We can still help you. The results are in National Restaurant Association show, Kyle and Sarah and myself. We were at the Davo sales tax booth and we were polling restaurant owners on the floor. This was a very unscientific poll, but the results are resounding. Restaurant owners do not like sales tax. Nobody likes sales tax. Doesn't matter what business owner you are, small business, big business, Davo automates the sales tax process. We are so grateful that Davo is the sponsor of this show. They automate sales tax at our Cali barbecue restaurants. It is $50 a month. It integrates with all the major point of sale partners, including Toast. So if you want to sleep at night, if you want to not worry about sales tax, Go to Davo, check them out, Davo Sales Tax. Uh, let us know how they're helping automate your sales tax in your restaurant so that we can share your Davo story on digital hospitality. Tell us about what, what separates Fix from your competitors. So when we started this, I was very upset. I, I, I learned that bookkeeping was an antiquated industry. Everyone... You don't say. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, you know, it's, I wouldn't say it's like the coolest thing when I come home and I'm like, oh yeah, like we're just bookkeepers. We're more than that, but you know, it's, it's, it's funny when you say it out loud. But the fact is, is that um, everybody was, is so set in their ways. They learn a system, they learn a software, they have a way of doing something. And even though the industry changes and even though um, the bookkeeping industry changes, they don't want to change because they don't want to learn something new, right? So I was like, we're going to take the opposite approach, right? We're going to try to bring the best software mm -hmm. to our clients. And if there's something along the road that comes along that we think our clients can benefit from, we're going to include that as well, right? So we're constantly trying to bring technology forward to assist in the bookkeeping process and to automate more things, but we still have you know, account managers that are available in case, you know, you have questions or the automation doesn't work perfectly, right? But we also came from this is that we're restaurant people to start, right? So 
I, you know, when we started this, I was not a bookkeeper and I would still argue I'm not a bookkeeper. I'm a restaurant owner that knows a lot about restaurant financials. And so all of everyone on our team comes from kind of like a restaurant background where we just happen to know bookkeeping as well. And so we can bring kind of our experiences and our, um, you know, what we know about the restaurant software in order to, you know, help guide the tech stack for restaurants and in order to say, hey, these work together, this doesn't work together. Um, this is what works perfectly for your type of restaurant. And so we've done pretty well with that, being restaurant people to start. And that's 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 what we continue to, you know, build our, build our sales and build our clientele with. What do you think is the hardest part about building a, a restaurant SaaS and services, right? Yeah. So bookkeeping is interesting because it's like we're we're service, but we have obviously a SaaS element of it. And I'm sure if you talk to people on our team, we would want to be <laughs> we would want to be more more uh, technology and have more and more technology available um, and and to streamline the service, but. Um, someone told me recently, like, it's hard to do both. It's hard to build like a tech company and a service company. And I think what we did is we focused really hard on the service side at first, before we even tried to raise money or build it and scale it. And so we may have like duct tape and scotch tape some things behind the scenes to, you know, make it seem like everything was automated. But in the end, we always gave really good service. And we knew we had something because people in Los Angeles and outside of Los Angeles were signing up for fix. And then when you realize, hey, like the problems that you have at like five to 10 locations is a different problem when you have three or four or 500 locations. Yep. At that point is when we start saying, okay, now let's put more money into technology. Let's hire a full-time CTO, which we have Yogish from uh, that we took from into it actually. Amazing. And let's like put some money into this to start healing those pain points that we can see along the way for our clients. And so we started with the service and now we're moving more into the technology um, and our own technology to, to, to supplant that. So I would love to ask you some basic questions about QuickBooks and restaurant accounting, uh, sure. primarily because I don't get the chance to ask those questions very often on this show. Uh, <laughs> I went to ChatGPT, and you know, ChatGPT gave me some some prompts or some some questions, but these are frequently asked questions. So okay. if restaurant Sorry. owners, if the internet's asking it, uh, we want the answer. So how do I track daily sales in QuickBooks for my restaurants? Yeah. So basically we integrate any POS system directly into QuickBooks online. So in the past, and maybe like old school bookkeepers um, might do like a journal entry at the end of the month, but we bring it in daily. Uh, it comes in daily. And I always, in any sales pitch, I always say as, as, as detailed as you have it set up in your POS system, we could bring it in as detailed as that into QuickBooks online. And so we bring that data in daily, you know, the credit cards uh, match the bank account. And it's kind of like, you know, the, the, the behind the scenes of the bookkeeping, but you need the POS system to automatically, you know, integrate into QuickBooks. And one other thing that I would point out, a lot of the times these POS systems will say, hey, like we integrate with QuickBooks online. The problem is, is that each POS system does it differently and they're not looking at it from the bookkeeping side. They're just kind of looking at it from the POS side, but we have a way with our own integration where we could take like any POS and kind of like force it to format the way we want it to within QuickBooks. And so, yes, you got to bring it in daily. And whether you're doing that by hand or through an integration, that's what I would recommend. Uh, can I use QuickBooks to manage my restaurant bookkeeping? And what does Fix do on top of that? Sorry, you froze there for a second. I what, said, what, uh, can I use QuickBooks to manage my restaurant bookkeeping? And what does Fix do if I'm adding Fix onto the QuickBooks? So yes, you can totally use QuickBooks to manage the restaurant bookkeeping, right? People have this notion that QuickBooks can't do period reporting or that it can't do consolidated reporting, but it totally can. And with Fix, 
we set that up for you in our own software and our own portal to do the consolidated reporting across all of your locations. But QuickBooks on its own is hard to do the restaurant bookkeeping without other software to kind of enhance it, right? Like I always say your iPhone is great, but you download apps on your iPhone to make it better, right? And so that's what we do for QuickBooks, right? So we use software to help with the accounts payable. We like Automate or Plate IQ a lot, starting to use Margins Edge a lot as well. Um, but uh, with the payroll companies, we make sure that that integrates directly with QuickBooks. We've already talked about the POS system. And then that we have a way of automatically reconciling your like third party apps. So if you're on DoorDash or Grubhub or Uber Eats, we have this nifty dashboard that you have access to that shows you how you're performing. And all of that kind of put together on top of the fixed portal that lives in QuickBooks, that lives on top of QuickBooks, that's how we do the bookkeeping. The foundation is in QuickBooks, but all of the enhancements and our portal live on top of it. And so you would view your reporting through our portal, but all the bookkeeping is done within QuickBooks. So somebody that's listening to this, they own five restaurants, they're using QuickBooks. They definitely need a bookkeeper upgrade. Mm -hmm. They need something to go, okay, Ryan, everything sounds great, but isn't going to take two, two months, four months for me to onboard with Fix? Yeah. That's, uh, so for us, like we love using QuickBooks online because integrations work really seamlessly with it, right? Like our onboarding, we always say like, we can work as quickly as you give us the information, right? Like you give us your logins to the POS, make sure we have access to the bank account. We can get everything set up super quickly and start generating reports, you know, right away. We try to get our PNLs done within five business days. Obviously the first PNL or two, we're gonna have some back and forth. We're gonna review it a few times, but once we get in that cadence, it, it really does come out. But in terms of connecting everything and getting it all set up and what people call mapping those items, there's other softwares out there that they're not shy in saying that it takes two to three months. It doesn't take that long with us. It works really seamlessly. We can really get you up and running in about a week. Um, and we try to take that heavy lift off your plate. As long as you give us the access, we can do everything else. And the other thing is too, because we got a lot of restaurant people that work for us, we don't have to like you know, send you a bunch of lists asking like, what does this go to? What does this go to? We know that these things go to, you know, bar supplies or liquor costs or whatever. And, uh, we want you to focus on running your restaurant. We don't want you opening up spreadsheets or looking at the mail or going sifting through papers. Like there's easy ways of getting us that information and there's easy ways for us to kind of assimilate that into the books. Is there also a service that you provide for tax getting companies ready for tax season? We do. So we do handle like sales tax on behalf of our clients. There's obviously some local city taxes that happen, you know, depending on what city you're in. As far as the end of the year, um, we totally get it ready for the CPAs. We give the CPAs access. We'll have conversations with the CPAs. We're very transparent. So they have access and, you know, and they have the questions, we, we we work with them. You still do need a CPA to file your taxes at the end of the year, yep. but ultimately we take care of everything, you know, until then. And then we work with them to make sure everything is filed timely and, and accurately. Amazing. Um, anybody that's listening to the show, reminder, every Wednesday, every Friday on LinkedIn Live, you can join the show. We want to hear about your restaurant. If you're in sales, if you're in marketing, if you're in tech, uh, we've got a community of digital hospitality leaders that they meet all over. We're every single week, Wednesday, Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, join us. It's a chance for you to be on this show. Ryan, where can people expect? Are you guys end of year? Where are you going to be? Any fix booths, any trade shows? Yeah, yeah we're uh, we're going to be at um, Restaurant Finance in Las Vegas, which I think is in like November 10th yep. ish around at, at the Fountain Blue. So we'll we'll have a booth there this year. Right. Um, we um, as far and then we'll we're we're starting to load up our you know our docket for 2025. But I think that's the last booth that we'll have uh, yeah. this year, which will be in Las Vegas and. You know, we are in Los Angeles, but I have my partners in Boston and we have account managers all over the country. So 
we're kind of all around, but we will be in Las Vegas at RFDC uh, this coming November. And you uh, are active on LinkedIn. You're starting to post frequently on LinkedIn. Uncomfortable I'm, posts. Yeah, I'm starting to get better <laughs> about posting on LinkedIn. Um, I don't just creep on people. I'm actually posting now. So That's yeah, it's working, yeah, it's what it's it's working well. Getting getting yourself out of your comfort zone, so to speak. But you know, you got to tell your story. You got to show people you're out there. Appreciate that. So please reach out to Ryan. We'll put links. Getmyfix.com. F I X E dot com and uh yeah i'm really excited that we are not only learning about what you guys are doing but more importantly the restaurants that you're helping because um bookkeeping accounting all of that is not typically why restaurant owners get into the game <laughs> it's like <laughs> there's plenty of other businesses you can get into if that's your thing like restaurants are way too hard um so you got to have a team of people that are smart and qualified and can help you make it a lot easier yeah. And I think the last thing that I would say is like, you know, all, a lot of time frequently our restaurants ask us, you know, how are we doing? Are we, how are we looking? And so the fact that we have everyone on this tech stack, we could very easily show people, Hey, you know, you're paying too much for tomatoes or you're doing this. And that some of that information is going to be coming out kind of in a more automated fashion Wait. at the end of the year. But Look, this is a hard business to be in and anything we could do to help them out, help our clients out, help whoever out run this better because it's not a there's not a perfect solution for everybody, but we could try to make it a little bit easier so that you can focus on what you need to do. That's awesome. Uh, if you guys want to reach out to me, you know how to find me at Sean P. Waltreff, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F, Instagram, LinkedIn, all the platforms. We appreciate you. Stay curious, get involved. Don't be afraid to ask for help and we'll catch you guys next week. Appreciate you, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you.